In this video, we will describe how to plan and conduct experiments. Let us first distinguish between an experiment and an observational study. An observational study will measure a variable without influencing the responses of the subjects or experimental units. On the other hand, an experiment imposes specific conditions or treatments on the subjects and measures their responses, usually for two or more treatments. A well-designed experiment typically involves random assignment of treatments, where subjects are assigned to a treatment based on a chance process. This reduces the variability among treatment groups. Besides treatment groups, it's also important to have a control group, which is simply a group of experimental units from which data is collected that has no treatment applied. The main purpose of collecting data from a control group is to prevent confounding and to reduce the variability of the response variable, or what is being measured. Another significant element in a well-designed experiment is using enough experimental units in each group in order to attribute any differences in the response variable or effects of the treatments to the random assignment of treatment groups. This principle, known as replication, ensures that the effects of chance balance out and that the results are reliable. Bias is the tendency of a measurement to consistently over or underestimate a population parameter. Bias can result from other unintentional differences between the different treatment groups. For example, if group 1 gets an experimental pill and group 2 gets no pill, this could potentially influence the result because the people in the study know whether they received the treatment. This could lead to the placebo effect, meaning that the subjects who are treated may simply get better because they think they are being treated. In order to combat this, it is important to use a double-blind experiment where neither the administrators nor the subjects know which treatment they receive. For example, the control group should receive a sugar pill so that they don't know whether they are getting the experimental pill. This makes it so both groups are affected by the placebo effect equally, and accurate conclusions can still be made. When conducting an experiment, it is important to consider confounding variables. Confounding occurs when two variables are related in a way so that their influences on a response variable cannot be differentiated from each other. On the AP Statistics exam, you're expected to identify a confounding variable when necessary and also explain how the confounding variable relates to the explanatory variable and how it affects the response variable. There are several ways in which data can be obtained in order to carry out a proper statistical test. A completely randomized design is a method of gathering data in which the experimental units, such as subjects or other units, are assigned to certain statistical treatments completely by chance. A randomized block design is an experimental design that begins with the formation of blocks consisting of individual subjects that are similar in some way that is significant to the response being identified. We can think of a randomized block design as attempting to be similar within, different between. The random assignment of treatments is then tested and carried out separately within each block. A matched pairs design is a statistical experiment in which there is blocking performed to compare two treatments in an experiment. In some matched pairs designs, each subject receives both treatments in a random order. In other matched pairs designs, the subjects are matched in pairs as closely as possible, and each subject in a pair is randomly assigned to receive one of the treatments. An experimental result is statistically significant if the observed effect could rarely occur by chance. When the results between experimental groups are statistically significant, it is likely that the differences can be attributed to the treatments administered in the statistical test. However, significant results may imply a significant association, but do not imply causation. One common mistake is making conclusions from results from an observational study. While observational studies can show associations between two different variables, they make no attempt to control for the effects of other variables by using good experimental design. Another common mistake is to not use randomized design. Splitting subjects into different groups without randomizing the groups leads to useless results because it is unclear whether the observed results happened because of the differences between the treatment groups or the treatments themselves. One last mistake is generalizing to the wrong population. For example, if an experiment were to be done on high school students, it would only be proper to generalize the results to other high school students. It would not be appropriate to say that the results are applicable to the greater population. Additional AP problems are 2013 number 2 and 2016 number 3.